Hey tribe, hey. I'm out running my errands and getting my um, meal prep, chicken breast. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, what's been going on with me the past few days? Well, actually it started last Sunday. I was out running my errands and getting my meal prep and I uh, started listening to uh, one of the, um, I think she's spiritual doula, um, and, uh, I actually first heard the, he's making noise, <laughs> I actually heard, um, her for the first time, she interviewed, uh, one of my all-time favorites, Sister Myra, and, um, so anywhere from there, um, she was actually, uh, on another show, of one of the people I enjoy listening to, which is Brother Panic, and um, he is connected to Uncle Hanky, and she is connected to Uncle Hanky, and that's how um, they all were around each other. Um, uh, Brother Panic was on Uncle Hanky's show, and she was too. So anyway, from there, here and there, um, uh, when her things pop up, I listen to it, and then also she has a herb these herbs and things like that and when my other two go-to's for herbs um, weren't producing I was like hey let me um, look and see what she has and she actually has the inflammation herb that has been like a game changer um, for me because for almost a year last July like I started feeling bad like a month or so before that and it was like I think my last post of working out and all that was like the first or second week of July and then I was down hard you know um, and so it was a series of different things that led me to be able to come um, with this herb and um, she was actually on the show where um, Uncle Hanky was talking about the xenon bulb um, and so the uh, krypton bulb and the xenon bulb and uh, so I just like put my energy into that and that enabled me to, um, you know, get my focus together to where I was able to um, be in a more um, present state of mind. Because if any of you all suffer from chronic pain, you know, it's just, it's hard to do anything, you know, and my thing was just to... <laughs> get up every day and go to work and that was it and come home and get in the bed I really wasn't and of course eating <laughs> um, you know and it was just hard to think it was hard to be in any um, space you know and so um, that meditation state it was just like okay I'm putting everything into those bulbs and as I put everything into those bulbs um, you know that cleared out space in my mind so that I could be like, hey, you know, I'm not like giving in to this chronic pain. There has to be a way, you know, let me find a way. And so once I was in that state of mind, basically that's when the doors start opening up for me. And I found this herb and I went to one of the other shops and I ordered it and I hadn't received it. And I was like, you know, hey, is, is it coming because you know um, they're not Amazon like Brother Panic says all the time they're not Amazon they have good products and they're worth the wait at the same time you know I needed to be on with my healing and um, they basically uh, did a refund and you know they don't have that product anymore available um, and then that's when I was like hey let me check uh, Zoe Essentials out and she had it and I'm telling you I started like in maybe April or May and I'm telling you that stuff started working like right away and now I'm just suffering from <laughs> exercise sickness is what my sister coined the phrase which I'm glad she did because I would definitely be at the hospital um, and I'm limited to two workouts a day which is such a drag like my arms hurt just a little bit because um overdoing it you know it's like I'm excited that I can do anything and I'm trying to jump back into you know doing three to four workouts every day um, five six days a week and you know my body's just like okay <laughs> slow up slow up slow up you know and so um 
at that point that's my own fault however um, it's still not as bad as it was so on, on the whole um, the inflammation has gone way way down my body's just way better um, even with my foot because um, when I hurt my foot um, that should be something that I'm in a boot for you know and I haven't been in a boot I've been taking care of it myself and I'm actually able to do a lot I mean I've been working out on my foot since June like doing 10 workouts a week since June on this hurt foot like really hurt foot and uh, so I'm just like wow you know these supplements are just working and I'm grateful um, and uh, my spirit reminded me to stay on top of it because it's like I started feeling good and I'm like okay I'm gonna skip a date I'm gonna skip a date and it's like nah you aren't at the skip a date <laughs> you aren't at the skip a date point so like just stay with what works um, and um, so anyway um, back to that so that's why I was listening on last Sunday to her um, her thing and she's actually she may not be here now but this past weekend she actually did an event for her group um, close to Miami uh, with Sister Myra and all of them um, so anyway prior to that she was just talking about Chiron and so that's what the her live was about was Chiron and so that piqued my interest I'm just like okay I've heard of Chiron the wounded healer you know and what really grabbed me was that she was saying that people usually, you know, try to stay away from their Chiron, you know, and it's like, um, and that's usually where you can find your gift at, that's where you can find your work at, and if you go ahead and push into that space, you know, you can find your work, and so you all have heard me talk about that I want to get my spiritual business back up and going, you know, the whole PhD in me, and just all of that, I want to be able to um, use my gifts, and just, I just enjoy just the whole spiritual thing, that's my happy place, um, and I've said before how I'm glad that um, my husband just lets me be in that space and enjoy myself and cracks him up, so I'm like, look, you know, Neptune, because I'm in my Neptune right now, and uh, so he just laughs, he's like, okay, he's an Aquarius, and uh, I have my Virgo shirt on, however, I'm driving, so I'll show you all later, and uh, anyway, so uh, listening to that, I'm just like, man, uh, I mean, I'm in a really, man, a really good, fantastic place, um, like I said, maybe later, we'll come on and um, talk to people about it and stuff like that, um, husband's really not into the whole he's great and supports me to be in the whole spiritual stuff and you know yeah do your podcast youtube all that do all that he's not really into it um that way he's not the social media person um however i can pass on the information um just not sure how i want to um, pass it on however um within the past few months starting in February starting February the 1st can't even explain how um, our life my life individually our life together his life individually has just man just popped off just exploded it's been really amazing to look at and see and what I'm understanding um, which is part of the Chiron stuff what I'm understanding also is like man, if you just aren't ready for your shit, you know, it will pass you by and you won't even notice it, you know what I'm saying, it's like your spirit to be like, hey, look for somebody who has a t-shirt on that says XYZ, that's what's in your dream, that's what's this and that, and you'll go to an event and you just not even see that person or that thing or that sign or whatever that was in your dream telling you, hey, do this, do that, and it's like, if you aren't ready, and I still have zero understanding, and when I have zero understanding of something, it's like, that's just not my business, you know, no matter how much I care for other people, how much I, you know, want my kids and my family and my friends and my loved ones and all that and stuff to be, um, to have their healing and their purpose and their, all the good yummy things, 
they just never have it until that's for themselves you know and it's like maybe that's not even what they see that they need to change something or have something or do something they're just in their own truth and that's all that it is and I don't understand another person's truth it's like I don't even understand what another person needs or wants I have zero understanding of what causes a person to change and heal and grow I just know personally for myself I started to um the healing journey because I wanted to be a part of my family you know because I was always you know the person who was um, said to be causing all these problems and stuff like that so I had gotten to the point where okay well I'm ready to just change so I could be better to be in my family you know um, and I had been um, started counseling uh, with my marriage and my kids and stuff however that didn't work so you know, it's just like, where's my space at? Where's my place at? Now I know better than all that shit. And it's really wild, still with the Chiron. It's really wild because when I'm interacting with my, my um, grown uh, children now, it's like, I'm like, I'm not it for you. And I never was. And that's so offensive and bothersome to them. And it's like to tell someone that something... That, the, that they've been socialized to believe is a buoy in a, in a tumultuous sea is not a buoy, it's actually an anchor. It's like these relationships with, you know, with your parents, with your children, with whatever, all those soul tie attachments are anchors to you being able to see who you really are and what your gift and truth is really supposed to be, you know, it's just like for the moment, you know, yeah, that's just the way that, um, you know, I'll go somewhere else, get something else. Um, it's just the way that you enter into the world, like, you know, it's, if you look at your mother, your father, or whoever is your guardian, <laughs> you look at them and it's just like, man, I don't even know your sister, siblings, people like that. And you just feel like, man, I shouldn't even be in this family. Like, how the hell did I even get in this family? Like, what was the big joke <laughs> that, uh, that put me in this family? You know, what is it? If you really look at it, it's like other than, um, um, other than, uh, you know, you being born that way. Um, it's like, how did you, you wouldn't even be around those people and what keeps you from, um, and these are just my own personal thoughts. What keeps you from being able to separate from those people and not have like, it's okay to be attached to something. It's not okay to be attached to something where you ignore, um, yourself, you know, where you don't, where you're not treating yourself well you know, where you're consciously and subconsciously putting them first, you know, where you don't even have your own goals and hopes and dreams because you're looking at, oh, my mom wanted me to be a doctor or this or that, or you can't even really just be yourself. Um, oh, I want to be in a polyamorous relationship or whatever. I want to have multiple wives or multiple husbands. You can't even do that because you'll be ostracized from your family. Um, I remember seeing something on one of the reality shows I watched and um, no one understood um, this young man and um, he basically had been ostracized from his family going on 10 years because uh, whatever religion that he grew up in was really strict and this one night he um, stayed up late um, and, and had a girl in his room and when his family found out he was ostracized from everyone and including you know the church and his family and whatever they weren't allowed like if, if they if they dealt with him they would not be able to um, be in the church anymore they would be ostracized and it just blows my mind that, you know, that you're a mother or a father and that you're ostracizing your own children because something, something that you can't even prove and don't even know is true is telling you, you know, you have to ostracize your own children. Like, but, but then your children are supposed to love you and be connected to you. I mean, man, people need a Virgo in their life because it's like, you know, well, maybe only people need me in their life because I don't know other Virgos. However, it's like if you find 
whatever sign, whatever sign you find that true with, if you have something in your life who, if you have someone in your life who will call a spade a spade, someone who will point out and say, hey, look, whatever you're building your life on, that's not even true. Just Google it, like Google the word, which brings me back to Chiron. And so, you know, I'm so interested in, you know, okay, well, how is my business going to jump off? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like right now, I feel like, well, probably not right now because I got some more information on it. <laughs> However, during the, during the process, I was just like, hey, you know what? I just want to be able to do um, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Um, and it's like, well how does all of you know well how how does all of that work and it's like okay this is how it basically works um you know when it's time those spiritual doors are open and now you know but now i'm settling into that now i want to settle into it you know before i was like okay the door is going to open it's going to open however i still had that part of me that's always there you know the part of me that made me a really good athlete in basketball and track and stuff like that the part of me that enables me to you know do three to four workouts every day you know five six days a week and not have no problem where everybody's like oh well you have to take a break you have to do this I'm like no take a break whatever I'm like bored if I'm I'm bored I'm like even now I'm so bored <laughs> like I'm bored if I'm not working out three four times a day you know like at this age 57 it's just like man I just need more like more to do and um I just enjoy it, it it's, it's not no strain and no um you know stress for me and so it's just like that's just that's just me that's just my personality that's just who I am and so even when I'm just like saying well hey the door is going to open when it's open I'm still always the one pe peeking at the pot to see if it's boiling and it's like girl the door is going to open when it's time to open I'm just like is it open yet is it open yet is it open yet is it open and, you know and it's like it's not going to open before it opens and so um with the whole Chiron thing, that's what I was looking in at first. Now, I got dragged into some stuff because, you know, um, that's why I don't like uh, counseling. You know, like I, I like the life coach thing. That's way better. Um, the counseling to me, just peeling, you know, you're going all, you're going into your past like that. And I'm just like, man, it's just not necessary. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, okay, I'm in the drive through so I can show you all my, my shirt. Show it to y'all. There you go. My Virgo shirt on. <laughs> I ordered a whole lot of shirts so I can um, so I can cut them up and uh, I'm getting some coffee so I can cut them up and um, have them when I when I'm working out because I only had like the same. I know you all seen the picture. I only had the same what three, four, five shirts. And since I put on so much weight, a lot of those shirts <laughs> don't even fit. And uh, so I was just like, you know what, instead of, um, cause I'm in, I'm embracing being fat. Um, I'm grateful to the part of myself that agreed to be fat while I was going through all of my stuff so that I can get to the point where I am now where, you know, now I'm back working out and, um, and, uh, you know, taking care of myself in a way that lines up with what I enjoy, which is like, I love to work out and do things like that and you know our family's always just been really skinny on my mom's side and um, we stayed skinny for so long and uh, just in 2019 I weighed 134 pounds so it's like you know I just want to be who I am without all of the reasons um allergies <laughs> all of the reasons that go with it you know what i'm saying my mom my dad my sister my brother my husband my ex-husband my other ex-husband my other ex-husband you know my kids said this or did this or you know this job or that job or i you know i live in florida instead of atlanta you know you know and i miss tribe and just all of these things it's just like with no voice at all uh with no voice at all but my own what do I want to do what do I want to say and who do I want to be and that's crazy at 57 years old and to me it's crazy at 57 years old you know um I'm 
I'm not anywhere near, you know, being like, oh, well, it's okay. You know, you were on your time. <laughs> Whatever. I'm sure so many people try to give me the advice that has led me to the expanded place that I am now. They try to give it to me a long time ago. And for whatever reasons, I just couldn't hear it. I couldn't see it. I couldn't understand it. I couldn't believe it. Um, you know, and now when I look back on it, it's just like, yeah, that was advice I could take. However, it's like, that wasn't my truth. And even though I didn't know how to express myself at the time as, you know, this is my truth, that's my truth, it still wasn't my truth and I wasn't going for it. And I'm still that way today. I'm just like, man, it's a million things that I got to look at before I listen to you, you know? And it, it's still, at times, it's like when I'm listening to other people and it's like, if your life is, if you aren't living the same truth that you're telling me that I should be living and going by, I'm not listening to you. Case in point, you have these ministers and Christians and stuff like that, and they are big and fat. You have the big fat singers and, and you got the big fat ministers and stuff like that. And then what, what are they doing? They're, t you know, they're singing about God and they're, the ministers are saying how you need to follow this scripture and that scripture. I'm like, you're not following none of those because if you were, you wouldn't be big and fat. Go sit down, go sit down. Cause you don't even believe what you're saying out of your own mouth. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's no healed person. It's no okay person that is that humongously fat it's not it's not if you were having any kind of medical issues or anything like that or whatever it's not and we even know that it's people who are 25 30 years old 40 years old less than that and they've been like huge and super fat and their asses are just dropping dead <laughs> just dropping dead hang on so it's like if if your BMI um, numbers and different things, just go to the doctor. Like be be mad at me and then DM me. Because when you go to the doctor and you're not healthy, and even if you're like, oh, it's okay for me to be this fat or whatever, your joints, your body, whatever, it's under stress and strain, and it's gonna give out. It wasn't made. It wasn't made for that. And it's no one who is eating at a level that's that's that allows you to have that much being big like that um that something else isn't going on and all i'm just saying is that if you're going to call someone out on their spiritual side and say hey look you really need to come to jesus but then you're fat you haven't come to jesus yourself all you said is that I've got, I've wrapped my head around and I've allowed myself to be vulnerable to Jesus. However, I'm not allowing myself to be vulnerable to myself so I could be healthy. And that just makes no damn sense. It doesn't make sense to be walking around and talking about Jesus and helping other people. Like same thing with that whole, I mean, my husband doesn't agree. However, this is my, this is my Virgo mind. And my Virgo mind is like that whole hypocrisy stuff. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It's like, don't tell me shit that you aren't doing yourself. What you can do is take a seat with me and we can both be on this journey of being better to ourselves. That's what I'm looking for. And if you don't come to me like that, I just don't have nothing to say. It's like all that hypocrisy, all that duplicitousness, all that, oh, well, you have this certain title. You're my mother. You're my father. You're my minister. You're this, you're that. And then you're doing shit that's the same and worse than me. I'm just not for it. I went for that bullshit when I was born and I just had zero ways of really expressing it until I learned enough myself. And that included going on a hundred, being a Tasmanian devil, you know, being a straight bitch. That, that included so much until I'm at this point where I'm just like, why am I even in a round where I would fuss, fight, cuss, do whatever um, over somebody else's truth? Like, who cares? 
who cares and so then I got away from that but then it was still internalized it was still something in there because at the end of the day I did care at the end of the day it did bother me to see someone in authority be so hypocritical it to to have anyone who's over me in a work position or in relationship position and you're doing the same shit but tell me not to do shit like it just leads to the question of why am I putting up with that why do I even put myself in those situations it's nothing for the person who is interacting with me from that space that's their space and that's their truth what it is for me is that that bullshit doesn't work no more you know what I'm saying it's kind of like when you peep the game my Virgo, when you peep the game on um, what's really going on, you know, then you're just like, hey, that just doesn't work for me anymore. And that's all I'm saying is like, it just doesn't work for me anymore. And I'm just going to continue on my healing journey. And that's what the whole Chiron thing um, did for me. That's where it started me at. And so um, for a minute, I got caught up in, um, you know, some of the Chiron stuff and then it's just like wait a minute I've worked on a lot of this stuff um I I was what was I originally looking for you know it's like you were originally looking for your business you know how to get your business started and which was crazy too because spirit had already shown me with the 10x that's already been done I could do my spiritual business and be fine you know and so then it's just a matter we're back to timing we're back to patience we're back to my life lining up the way that it's supposed to line up and it's like right now I have all the time in the world where my life is really good and I can um I can work on continue to work on myself which includes the fact of comforting myself um comforting myself by eating <laughs> my favorite thing <laughs> and um however I've gotten to the point where it's just like you know what you know once I'm in that um oops once I'm in that space where I want to um I now want to work out that's what I want to do you know we, I was really enjoying loving not going out and eating all the time and doing that hang on okay so um I forgot where I left off it but I'll just keep on going so anyway that kind of thing where there's a contradiction um you know for me it's like um I I used to be so caught up in pointing that out and stuff like that and now it's just like you know what the only thing that matters is that I know myself you know hashtag PhD and me and all the stuff like that and that's the only you know what I'm saying that's the only thing that matters you know that I know myself that I walk in my own truth and I noticed that the attachments that I have to people places and things it what is what causes me to sin against myself because I stop walking in my truth I start questioning my own truth because my own truth basically leaves most of the people I'm around out you know and it's like because I want those relationships because I want those people to be around me I'll put my truth in an area where you know okay put my shades on turn a blind eye that kind of thing however my true self won't allow that to continue so then that's when I started you know like how you're not really when you're distracted and you trip over something or different things like that those kind of things start happening in my, in my life I really know I'm out of order with myself when I lose my glasses <laughs> and that's a crucial thing because I am blind -er than a bat I have to have my glasses and so when that that's that was like a big thing to me especially during the times I really couldn't afford my glasses because they were really really expensive so it was really important that I that you know like how did I lose my glasses and when I lost my glasses it was like man I'm really absent from myself you know I'm really not being good and true to myself and it's no one's fault but my own it just zero matters what I feel like my mom my dad my sister my brother my ex my ex my ex or you know different people or things or this or that it matters not what I um, believe or thought or how I view things 
with anything external. The only thing that matters is me and how I see the world and how, how I reacted to that situation and things like that. And it's like it all comes down to if I'm not being good to myself, that is all that matters. And everything needs to stop so I can be good to myself. And so basically now that's where I'm at and those things start coming up in my life where they cause me to ask additional questions. And so with the Chiron and Pisces, you know, starting asking those questions about, you know, okay, these are the wounds and these are the wounds you need to heal. And these are the places where you can be helpful to other people. I'm just like, well, dude, I'm already... Um, I was already doing that without that information. I was already doing that, you know. It's like I I took more time out for someone who was um, mean or nasty acting or whatever. Because I'm like, oh, okay, I used to be that. I used to do that. So I got space for that, you know. And then I would take time out for single parents. And then, of course, I would take time out for anyone who had their abuse story. And the thing of it is, is it got to the point where, you know what, when you're ready to put that to the side, when you're ready to say, you know what, I may have, this person may have done X, Y, Z to me, it messed me up, it slowed me down, it tripped me up, however, I know I was created for more than that, I know I was created to have a beautiful, wonderful life, and to thrive, and that's what I want to do, I have zero idea of how to do it, I want to be on the journey, so I know how to do it, and so to do that, you have to let everything else go, so it's like when anything external catches your attention, just know that your own spirit tried to <laughs> get your own attention through your own self, and your ass just wasn't listening, and so it allowed different energies to grab your attention not so you can go off and cuss your boss out not so you can do this or that or this or that so that you stop and pay attention to yourself that somewhere in yourself it'll remind you and say hey you know what I don't cuss people out I don't get mad at people I switch jobs if I don't like jobs I switch places to live if I don't like places to live I leave people who don't line up with me and they're my romantic partner. So what is going on? Something else is going on. And so that's when you have to, when you're in a safe space, dig deeper. And so that's where I looked. I'm like, wow, I'm in a really fantastic place. If you look externally, I'm just in a really fantastic place. So if something is bothering me, um, it was uh, my relationship with my husband I just felt like it should be better. Like, I just felt like we should be, like, identical twins skipping hand in hand and having this wonderful relationship. And although that was an unrealistic Disney thing, I did know that this is a this is a person I can get along with. So why aren't I? And at that point, it's like, let me look at some more about myself. And what I realized about myself, I was still just in that... Um, that uh, pleasing mode, you know, I just wanted to please him, um, I didn't want to do anything um, that would bother him or this or that, you know, I, I didn't really want to tell all the truth or the hard truth or, or be authentic because I, what if it hurt him or bothered him or this and that, and that's just not the way to live when you really love someone, when you really love someone, the way to live is to be a hundred. Because if that person is really your BFF, like you're saying, then that person knows you inside out and they accept you inside out. You know, that's the only truth. You know, live your truth 100%. That person lives their truth 100%. And from that space of living the truth 100%, then you all are really friends. Then you all are really friends lovers then you all are really all of those um you know all of those things and so that's what I realized was um that's what I realized what was missing you know from um from my um, from my life and that's where I realized it's like wait I have zero idea about um how to live that authentic 
You guys bear with me for a minute. I'm dropping some stuff off. Still running my earrings. Ooh. <laughs> for a minute okay i just had to bring some stuff back by the house so um it's like digging um digging deeper into yourself and um that part of digging deeper into myself never would have come up because it was the vulnerability that I have um, in my relationship uh, with my husband that even allowed me to um, think on that, <laughs> think on that level, you know, because I'm just like anything or anybody else, they just can't have um, access to me like that, you know. I'm not available to anyone, um, and that's one thing that. <laughs> that my spirit was talking to me about. It's just like storm, you know. Some of you is still living like like uh, someone has access to you and, you. and you know that's not true. Like all the things that you've seen, um, it's like it's just not true anymore. It was true, you know. It was true and it took time to be able to say, you know, um, I still don't get these relationships, you know, because I think I'm, I'm calling BS on it. Like, you know, who who makes it so that you're automatically, um, automatically uh, attached to another being just because they, um, they had you, you know what I'm saying? Just because they created you, you know? Um, I was watching um, something on Instagram with Boozy and um, his daughter, um, 19 years old, put him on blast, you know, and was calling him names, you know, nigger, this, that, whatever, whatever, and um, saying all these things about him. It's just like, wow, that's your dad. However, it's just like, um, I've had that same thing happen with my kids. They call me bitch, you know, they call it to me like it's my first name and stuff like that. We've gone through that. Um, and it's just like going back and forth with them was just like you're going back and forth with someone off the street, you know. And until I got to the place where um, I put my foot down at, and that was after I basically... Um, allowed space. Ooh, my allergies. <laughs> I allowed space um, for my children again, like giving them another chance again. And this is after like 20 some years of counseling. This is after like, you know, um, the counselors spiritual people and stuff like that are just like man you got to let these people go because they have to find their own way and it's just like no I'm the mom you know they can't find their own way you know I have to I have to stay in place you know so they could um till they can find their way and it just that's a lie you know that's a lie like in church we used to say that that's a lie from the pit <laughs> It's like not near body. It's um my um my granddaughter. That's what I was trying to explain to um her mother. You know, um she's she's a yaya. She has it figured out. You know, she doesn't need the um the connections, the attachments. You know, and that's what makes her way better that she that she already has it figured out you know she remembers her spiritual self and you know i'm like my daughter to me was looking at her like she's missing something um because she doesn't have a, a relationship with me that she feels that my daughter feels like she should have and i'm just like you're missing the, pa the fact that your daughter came to this earth knowing that she didn't need none of that like none of it you know that it was all misplaced ah, stuff that um, oops, 
making a little bit of a mess. Misplaced. Um, it was just all misplaced, you know. It was just misplaced. And, uh, and, and my granddaughter doesn't have that. And, and she doesn't have it, and I no longer have it, you know. And it was, it was tougher. It was tougher for me to see that um, with my, um, with my uh, other granddaughter um, because I had a certain attachment to her. Um, she really <laughs> reminded me of myself, you know. She just had this um, love to her. Um, in fact, I've only met two people um, with that kind of love. And that's my granddaughter and uh, my other granddaughter and my husband. Like, and it has zero to do with what a person is seeing, you know, of them on the outside, you know. It's the, um, it's the spiritual connection. And that just... Like, man, it's just something to uh, see a person who um, who has that, you know, to behold a person, you know, who has that. It's just really something. It's just really the most amazing thing, you know. And so um, uh, in seeing that, being able to separate it from the person and being like, okay, it's not about the person. It's about your spirit is allowing you to see what you are. And if you can release the attachments and take that and focus on yourself, that's your journey. You know, that's where your journey um, begins at begins and ends it. And so um, the more that uh, you're able to understand that for yourself, you know, like the better and more wonderful uh, it is. It's like a beautiful, uh, wonderful thing. And so um, I'm in that journey um, and the more realization came to me. I'm doing my experiment. I heard something about vinegar and um, vinegar and salt. Because um, like the weed killers and the raid and all that stuff like that, I'm real um, sensitive to all of the um, chemical stuff and um, I just can't deal with it. And so um, different ways um, you know, through the AI and stuff like that show up to where um, different people are, you know, talking about, hey, you don't have to use this, you know, toxic weed killer or this thing. Um, I have some of them, um, like this one's supposed to be oil, you know, um, but it's still too much. It's too strong. You know what I'm saying? It's just, man, it just, yeah, it's just too strong. So it's just like, you know what? I'm going to keep on until I can find something natural, natural. And we know that um, the properties of vinegar, where it's, um, you know, where you're cleaning stuff and stuff like that. I can't stand the vinegar smell. So this is all being used um, outdoors. So I just wanted to experiment and see. And since I wanted to um, continue... Oh. Since I wanted to continue to talk, I wanted to continue to talk. It was just like, hey, let me let me try it on some of these. Some of these um weeds and well, I guess these are plants that people just picked and went crazy with. Can't really get to all of it. But I think what it does is makes the ground, you know, um, unusable. You know, where they're not getting the 
nutrients and stuff like that from the from the ground. So that soil is done with, which is fine because I'm planning on doing something different. We're in Florida, and I'm telling you, anything will grow so fast, no matter what. You know, good ground, even bad ground, just the, um, you know, the, uh, the whatever you call it, you know. So it's like, okay, I can grow. I can grow no matter what. So um, decided to do that while I'm, while I'm talking to you guys. Um, <laughs> but uh, I told you all I got this from um, Brother Q. He does the regression therapy, and um, he, uh, well, he was driving in his car <laughs> and still doing his uh, his lives and stuff like that. So, um, okay, I'm done with that. I'm headed somewhere else. But uh, anyway, um, it's like recognizing your. It's not the. It's not the person. It just never ever ever was you know the person is that um that part where something gets you to uh, be awake you know or calls you to um take a a deeper look at yourself and in taping taking a deeper it is mega hot out here in taking a deeper, closer look at yourself, then you can start seeing like, why um, does it feel like Groundhog Day? You know, like why um, is the same stuff happening? This fence. Oh. Hang on, guys. Why is the same thing happening? Like, why are you falling for the same things? You know, why are you drawing in the same people, you know, that you feel like hurt you? You know, like women, their famous claim is, you know, the ends aren't shit, you know, and it's like, but why? With all over 8 billion people on this planet, why are you picking those kind of men? You know, it's just like it just makes no sense that you, you know, baby daddy number one, two, three, four is what you call nothing. You know, why is your standard nothing? Why are you picking people that are nothing? You know, and then why are you staying loyal? I mean, that was my thing. It's like um, whatever I didn't value about myself. Um, I didn't, I didn't, um, look and say, hey, it doesn't matter if loyalty is important. Like, loyalty is a gift that someone gives, gets from me. And if they are not, um, if they are not the person to, um, have that gift, then at that point, they don't get it. It's like you don't give those kind of wrong things. You don't give a gift. It's like giving a car to a five-year-old and then you're upset and traumatized because the five-year-old drives, drives a car and wrecks it. And not only does he wreck it, he gets killed in the car crash. You know, whatever, you know, stuff like that. It's like, it's like, the unrealisticness of it all and the fact that I continue to build my life on it, you know, with husband number one, husband number two, and even went back and married the same man again. And that man hadn't changed from day one when I met him when I was 18 years old. You know, the part of me that needed someone like that to reinforce the things about myself that I wasn't valuable enough for myself I just kept doing forever 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 and really I stopped doing it um when I um met my current husband 
And even with him, I'm finding layers and layers that are still there. It's just that because he's not the um, type of person to um, uh, benefit from me in the same way that others have, um, that that's where I thought it was something different. And it really wasn't. It was just another kind of the same thing. And the reason why it was another kind of the same thing was because I just, I just saw the world as that. That's how I saw the world. And nothing could make me not see the world that way. Ileana Van Zandt said a long time ago, when you see crazy cross the street, and it's like I could not see what crazy was because I had no idea of myself. And I still had these attachments and the and my truth was defined by the tribe I was raised in, what I was born into and stuff like that. The most beautiful thing about my middle daughter's daughter, she has none of that. She has none of that. She's getting ready to be seven years old and she's still her own truth. And she can tell you all of these things. And I remind my middle daughter, I'm just like, this is such a great gift that you have. And um, she's Christian, so I'll use God. This is such a great gift that you have through all the abuse that you suffered in your life from myself, from your dad, from yourself, from the people that you pulled into your life that you were given this beautiful gift of a daughter. And it's like, if you just follow her, like if you stop right now at 36 years old, you say, you know what? I'm stopping right now. And the only thing I'm going to do until I understand myself and how to do it through my own self is channel through my seven-year-old daughter. And she will help you see that no, don't go that way. Yes, go this way. No, don't be with that person. Yes, be with that person. Until you start valuing yourself on that level. And I even pointed out some places where, hey, you know, you're saying you didn't like these things that happened in your life. However, can you look and see how you're putting some of those things on your own daughter and ask yourself why? You know, and that's with all three of my kids. They have kids. They have kids. And I'm like, ask yourself why with everything that's happened in your life that you are raising your children like you're raising your children, that you are selecting the type of men that you are selecting. It's like it ceases to be, I did you abusive. Your father was this. This person was this. And it comes down to the man in the mirror. It comes down to you. And it's like, I no longer will have conversations with people who aren't willing to sit down at the same table as they're basically placing me at. If you feel that I'm not shit or what I did wasn't shit, then sit down here and admit your shit also. Sit down here and let me tell you what about you isn't shit either. And then from that place of both of us being a mirror and a reflection or whatever, we can we can agree to do better. I'm going to do better just because I desire to do better. I'm not going to do better because of the agreement for us to do better. I'm just saying this is one place where you can start building your tribe from. If everybody that you're dealing with wants to be better and not put their stuff on each other, <coughs> then let's do that. I mean, um, we had a, a tribe like that called the Triangle. I spoke about it many times. And basically, we gave ourselves permission to vent. And then we said, what was your part in it? It's like we got to speak into each other's lives and say, what was your part in it? And yes, at different times, it became really hard because it's hard to hear the truth. It's hard to hear that your life is so effed up because of you, because of the stuff that you did to yourself. And because of anything that you can say that anyone else did to you, you have done 10 times worse. You know why? Because with knowledge of what you didn't want, of what hurt you and caused you pain, you selected just that for yourself. You created just that for yourself. So forget about the part of where it's just like, wow, you know, I hate my mom because she did this. Then look at your own little baby and you're doing the same thing. You hate 
the family that you grew up on in, but look at your own life. You created that fam that same family, you know? And so that's why it's like so important to know yourself. Like wherever you can stop and just focus on yourself, that's what needs to be done. That's the order of the day. Stop focus on yourself you still can be a part of the family that you're in you can still love the family that you're in all that stuff i'm not telling you all to cold turkey walk away although people have done that at the same time until you understand yourself it doesn't matter how many people places and things you walk away from how many people you block how many people you air out on social media it doesn't matter because you're going to continually draw those people to you that's that's those are your people that's your tribe that's where you really truly want to be and all you're basically looking for is the same thing however you want to be the person who's in the in control you want to be the dominating person you'll hear women who have had men they say treat them like shit and then they get a really good guy and they treat him like shit so that's all you basically were looking for was someone to be on top of the treat like shit you weren't looking for someone who basically you've healed they've healed enough so that you all are not um constantly that adjutant to each other and when you are you all have enough love for yourselves trust for yourselves knowing of yourselves to have that with the other person so that when they do say hey you know what i noticed this about you you know every third thursday you go into a full rant like what happens on the third thursday of each month for you and then you could be like you know what i never wanted to tell anyone but you know i was violated this time of the month every year when I was growing up until I left, ran away from home and it just naturally just triggers me and puts me in a bad mood. It's like, okay, okay. So now we can work with something. Now we can look and say, okay, that's what happens. Now let's put some things in place so you can tell yourself, hey, I'm safe. That's not happening to me anymore and I no longer want to build my life on that shifting sand of pain. You know, and so for me, my husband and I are talking around July 4th, and it got kind of tight for a minute. Um, however, we were talking about the Virgo and the, the, the Aquarius, and he was like, Well, the Virgo is the most unlike signed, and this and that, and this and that. I'm like, I know, I know, I know those things. Like, there's no need to get mad and bothered with it. It's like if you had someone always pointing out that every time you open your damn mouth, you're a hypocrite, who wants that? no one wants that people want to be able to gossip people want to be able to tell other people what to do with their lives and give them advice they want to be able to do all that stuff without looking at themselves and with a virgo you just cannot do that you know you cannot tell me hey don't eat that bagel and and you know have that starbucks coffee you know the frap and all that that's like ten thousand calories and then I'm sitting there looking at your plate and you got 10,000, if not 10,000 more, you know, and, but I'm supposed to listen to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. Nobody wants, nobody wants to hear that. And I'm just like, I'm just like, man, I'm not going to be keeping stuff quiet or secret anymore, whatever. The only truth is your truth. And so this is my truth and this is your truth and you do with it what you will one has nothing to do like with the other you know and so it's like wrapping it up going to the Chiron it's like that Chiron message although it wasn't for me to you know oh I want to start my business and my business should take off tomorrow it's not that what it is is just a reminder of you know hey storm it's things in your life that you have already found a place for and already said you know like this is where I'm gonna be at this is where um my you know my truth is at. I've already um I've already done um those things and so at that point it's like um 
lean in deeper to those things so that you can um, have uh, what you want, you know, for yourself. Like lean in deeper, lean in harder. Like don't, like don't let up. I know it's painful for you. Just don't let up. You know, that's all that's being said and done. And um, I'm really looking forward to my session uh, with um, Big E uh, Tuesday. And I'll, you know, come back and let you all know about that because, man, I've had everything to say about Virgo men. I've got like 10,000 jokes about Virgo men and come to find out that he's a Virgo man. And um, I've already uh, had some interaction with him and um, he did my, um, the, my, my Chiron is in Pisces. So he did that and he was just on point with a whole lot of stuff. And it's just like, okay, you know, what I'm looking for is the is the way through and to be able to close those doors permanently forever forever and it's not permanently on the outside it's not permanently on the manifestation side it's not any of that because those things are already true however is the anxiety the panic the hurt the pain the different things that still in vapors come up and it's just like, you know what, I'm no longer even available to vapors or anything else. I'm no longer available to anything. My truth is the only truth. And another person's truth is their truth. And just let it be okay. You know, Virgo be damned. Just let it be okay. Because at the end of the day, as a human being, what I understand about other people's hurt and pain and trauma or whatever, until you see that is not an issue for yourself, is always going to be an issue for yourself. It just always is. And I'm looking for something way bigger. And I'm seeing where I'm holding myself back. Like these relationships aren't even important. It's like the bigger truth. Like we don't know how we got here, who set this whole thing in motion, whatever. And then that that's the puzzle I want to chase after. Like, you know what? People really aren't purposely doing anything to each other. This is just the soup we were brought in. This is just what happened. So if something is making these things so important to me, guess what? It has to be something else going on. See, I got it. It has to be something else going on. And only as strong as the pool of the love for my girls or my mom, my dad, my sisters, my brothers, you know, the sense of loyalty and um, sense of doing right at work and being this right kind of person, all that. Those things are like ointment fly traps. It's not they are is the situations are and so if i say well what could want me to be so trapped that i never look over there everything's happening over here everything's happening over here like no 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 stay over here look over here look over here see that's where you need a virgo in your life because it's like wait a minute wait wait this is too crazy it doesn't make no sense and it makes no sense for me to be bothered about situations and things that happen in my life from choices I made when I was 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. It makes no sense. It makes no sense for me to hold my mother accountable for situations and things that she um, made decisions for when she was 25, 24, whatever. You know, those things just make no sense. It makes no sense that I'm a grown-ass woman and if I don't want to be at with a person or in a place or a thing, I just don't go change my life. That I got to roll around on the ground. That I got to go eat all this food. That I got to go talk to, you know, talk to nausea about my situation versus just changing it. It's like if I can't just change it, then it's something else that has nothing to do with anyone else. So, anyway, I'm glad I got to get all of that out. I'll catch back up with you all after my session. However, I'm not promising what day because, you know, I don't do that anymore. Just subscribe and then when I come on, you'll know. And as always, I'm speaking from my point of view. I'm not speaking from your point of view. The only thing that my conversations should be is what I'm offering is just, hey, you may be having some situations in your life. You may be feeling some ways. And I'm just saying, I'm just one person who's chasing those ways down. I'm one person who's not settling for the 
the way I feel like I've been socialized and the attachments and the this and the that. A true person who loves you allows you to be free. That's even your mother, even your father, that's anyone. And they're not mad about it. It's like, go see what's over the mountain. I support you in seeing what's over the mountain. I'm not going to scare you. Oh, don't go over there. The boogeyman's over there. Don't go over there. You know what? You are going to um, trip and fall if you go see what's over the mountain. And guess what? You trip and fall by staying in a place that you think is safe. You are going to be hurt by people who are over the mountain. Guess what? You're hurt by people who are right here supposed to be safe. The same daggone thing that people are trying to warn you about in not seeking yourself out and not trying to find your truth and not trying to understand yourself. Those same hurts and pains are happening in this life. You cannot keep yourself from hurt and pain and this and that. You cannot save your own life. You cannot save someone else's life. You don't know if you're going to be the person with the disease that you die from. You don't know if you're going to be the person who gets in a wreck. You don't know if you're going to be the person who's falsely accused and put in prison for 40 years. You don't know any of that. Stuff just happens. However, what you do know and what you have the opportunity to know 100% inside out is yourself. Know yourself inside out so that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what you've gotten yourself into, consciously or unconsciously, no matter what happened to you and it wasn't your fault and it wasn't fair, that you know you'll be okay and you don't continue to heap on top of yourself worse stuff by choosing people places and things that show you that you don't love and care and hold your own self in value where you stop calling your choices and decisions what you made and blame on someone else and you call yourself to yourself i made choices and decisions that close other doors to me permanently and it's no one's fault but my own and what I can do today is to stop doing that to myself and walk out a path of knowing myself in my own truth. And for whatever 10 seconds I have left in my life, I can live a beautiful, wonderful, amazing, magnificent life, even if it's just for one less than a second. Alright, I am gone. Done with my errands. Show you all my shirt one more time. <laughs> I love this shirt. Virgo. I said Virgo. And I just appreciate you all for listening. I just want to say that anything that comes up in my life, I'm going to talk about it. So just make sure that, you know, if you don't want your stuff, talk about it. <laughs> make sure. So anyway, I love myself. I love my love. I love my kids, my grandkids. I love my friends. I love my family. You know, I love humanity. I love all that. And it has Zippo to do with what I'm talking about. Because if I'm not true to myself, I can't be good to you or anyone else. All right. Till later. Hold this. <laughs>